Is there like an SOB action plan that they have? Um, no, not really. So there was one gentleman, I forgot who it was. Do you guys remember? The uh, guy from... Um, the you attorney? were there, Joe, right? Oh, the attorney, Phil Lyon. The attorney, the, Phil Lyon, more license. Right? the attorney had more... He had more of like a dialed in... PowerPoint, step by step. step he by was a good president. Yeah, he was a good president. Actually, I took away a lot from there. I actually got to email him, and uh, I want to get his presentation because yeah. a lot of that stuff I didn't realize. I didn't realize that you know you can be sued with have you know with all the the, 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 yeah, the sexual yeah. relations within the organization. I mean, I knew that, but the way he broke it down. Complain about this? We get back. But oh, yeah, you're you're in trouble. Right, but. But he also broke down how you can have your 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 entity in a holding company, and then you know that's a that's all new to me. You know what I mean? And to obviously to get less risk, absolutely yeah. degrees of separation. Yeah, yeah, degrees of separation. One of his take homes was you're more likely to get sued by your employees than your customers. Yeah. And so we worry about the agreements with the customers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it's you know, unfortunately your own employees. You were there, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Look. All right. So you you're, you're also a consultant in the elite. Be shameless plug, just don't be ashamed. <laughs> yeah, Joe Jodovich, Technical Test Solutions, we yeah. write protocols, SOPs, right. and, and this conference didn't dive as much into that. It was more 30,000 foot level. Yeah, so it's a high level overview. Yeah, right. and it was a more expensive conference. I want to say it was about $1,700 a person, right. but what we were just talking about with that is I kind of compare it to going to like a high-end restaurant. Right. The clientele is different. Right. Probably one of the best things about it is 150 people that are business owners that want to grow. Right. Most people are in that uh, one million to ten million range, and getting more granular. Uh, and one of them that I took some stuff away from was I've always talked about. You know, the best techs aren't necessarily the best service managers. Right. And I see some people they just keep promoting their best techs, and you look back four years later, like, you yeah. fought, you fired four of your best techs because you promoted them. They could cut it. And what if you still had those as techs and hired a separate service manager? You'd be right. golden. And uh, they went into some of the details of uh, you know having the techs know their KPIs. Most companies don't do that. Just send them out, and the manager, if they're not performing, yeah, if they're not performing, the manager will talk to them about, hey, your cancellation rate's high or this and that, but they get them to know some of those KPIs. And then if they can start regurgitating, talking about their cancellation rate, and they can manage themselves and their numbers, and then that's going to be somebody who can manage other people too. So basically, the take-home was have them earn their position as a service Yeah, manager. it's like you, you don't know how to manage the business. And I don't think it's just about anything that people put. Then nobody matches the business, right? Yeah. That's what like you're seeing constantly is, yeah. Keep hiring tech that are good techs, and then you take them out of the field, and then they can't manage people. They can't manage, they, <laughs> and they don't. To be honest, they're fair. They usually couldn't have to train either. Nobody cleaned them for that goal. They just yeah. dumped them there. Yeah, because the owner or the one doing the training, yeah. they just kind of figured it out as they went. They yeah. really don't know what they're doing either. You know, they might be just a good personality and pull it off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a great way to phrase it. You yeah. know, not that we're idiots, but we're. Yeah. But it seems the pants we figured out how to be successful. And yeah. How do you tell somebody else, hey, this is how you run a team? And we, we expect everybody else to like follow it. Yeah, they yeah. Have that, that DNA. Yeah, they were kind of saying, you know, hey, it's not necessarily you know, ruling out personality tests and other things like that, but you know, doing this with KPIs and numbers. And if they can look at the numbers and they understand it, that's yeah. who you want for a service manager if that's the majority of their duty. Right, right, right. So, well, that's probably one of my biggest takeaways. I, I think, yeah, yeah. too, like, the way they mentioned how, and I'm guilty of this with my employees because I really care about my employees' career probably more than they do. And one of the things that they mentioned was like, don't do not do that. If you're, I forgot who it was that was on the, the, which speaker it was, but they were saying basically that if you care about your employees' career more than they do and you're putting too much energy into that, you're losing because if they don't care, they're never going to grow. And so you have to move on. And I thought that was a big to me, that was an eye opener because I'm really passionate about my employees. And it's hard because, especially because I'm a family owned business and I care about the people that are around and I really want to make. And, you know, look, if somebody just wants to be a tech and that's all they want to do, that's fine. They might be an excellent tech. But if you have hopes for them to be something more in your organization and they don't want to do it, but you, but it's a, it's a, yeah, but you have to figure that out. Yeah. 100%. But, but for someone like me, it's hard because I don't want to give up. Yeah. And I and I keep trying to yeah. coach them, and I keep trying I to make it. But then you get yeah. worse. Yeah, and they then you, you, you know they have to want it. And so they want it. You don't want it for them. Yeah, you got to stop. And so they want it. And then when they show you that they want it, obviously that was a big one. But to me, I think the other thing was like just how like they at this conference, right? 
they look at it from a straight business aspect where they're looking at the numbers and they're dialing in laser sharp, laser focused. Like, what are your cancels this month? What are your sales? What is like every KPI, every number is being looked at. Whereas like for me, I'm more looking at the service side because I'm a smaller organization. And I really care about my customers. Right. And I, it's hard for me to like to like really look at the business aspect when it is a business, when I'm so focused on service. And so but now I take it away and I'm like, OK, I really need to look at my numbers. I need to look at the data. I really need to. This is a business like I, I need to make money. Right. But I still care about my customers. And if, as I scale, I want to make sure there's a balance. But I really took away that it's time to really like focus on your numbers and really you're a business at the end of the day and you want to make money. And so that's what I took away from it a lot. Joe, you, you do a ton of, of business consulting. But, uh, when you're talking, we are like, who do you deal with main kids? Is it solo operators? Is it a three, four, five man company? Yeah. That they've already figured this out because what I see most of them when I'm talking to them, I was like, yeah, they, they don't have any numbers. Like, yeah. They don't even know what quick to says. They have no idea, like, what were your numbers up with? Well, I think I'm doing poor or not. Yeah. Give me the last time. Okay. It wasn't poor, it was night going out. Yeah. You know, they're, they're assuming it's this number and they don't even know the number. Yeah. Uh, so what is your experience in that? Okay. <laughs> what do you don't do you do that? Gosh, no. And for the demographics I work with, I will say different, different demographics of companies have different needs. So smaller companies, I'm working with them quite a bit on making agreements and just getting off the ground with basic stuff like that. And, uh, I don't know if we talked about it before. My wife's an attorney. Yeah. I've sucked her into the bug world. Even since right. we talked last, she's doing a lot more. Yeah. So we're tag teaming writing agreements for people. I know Jose and I were talking about that You know, right now for termite agreements, stuff yeah, like I got, that. I'm going to have my exam in the next two months. So. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll be, coming uh, out. I'll, I'll be calling you about lines. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've got templates for wildlife, for the regular pest control law, and a bit of everything. Right. And uh, kind of tag teaming it is she's the lawyer. She knows the law. I know pest control, 25-plus years experience. So things that I've seen in the past... You know, one, a lot of the lawyers don't call people back because they make the big money fighting in the trials, not write contracts. And then two, they don't know pest control. So things like discussions like we've had, like, you know, okay, I'm going to want to bill monthly, but do service quarterly. And lawyers, they don't understand that. Or if you got different services, you want to do an add-on mosquito. They don't know how to set up that business side of it. So that's the one angle. Now, that's mostly the, uh, the smaller companies. You know, if it's just you and one guy, you don't really need procedures yet. You know, if you're growing fast, you can. I've done that for some companies that are like equity firms and the yeah, two front stars. Are on my cage. It's like yeah. a case deal. It's not elaborate. Yeah. And it's there that they can yeah. go back and follow yeah. And even mine are only two pages because yeah. what I find if you get longer than that, yeah. nobody reads it. And you waste time. Yeah. yeah, perfect. One yeah. page, front, back, or digital PDF. But usually the probably the bread and butter of my clients are usually in that kind of one to ten million range. Right. That they you know, one million dollars, you got about four employees. Typically you can manage four okay, you start getting closer to eight, about that $2 million mark, that's where everybody plateaus. And because that's where eight people, you know, that's about what we got around the table. If everybody right. here was text, you can't talk to them all. And, hey, what are you doing? And by the time, you know, I get say Dennis going right, you know, Franklin's not out of bed yet. And, not, and his customers are calling. And, and so the wheels start falling off. And that's when you got to start getting service managers up and helping you out. Everybody's got to do the same procedures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the service manager for the shock absorber, your SOPs. Go ahead, Rolly. I was going to ask if it's information, like five to one. Sure. For so, how many? So like I say, if you have 20 techs, you have that yeah. 30 managers? Yeah, no, great question. Uh, a small company, usually one service manager with the, with the four employees. That's usually about where it starts, four to six. If you get cranking and you're several million dollars, you get more efficient. And that's where usually one service manager can run 10 techs. Now, this is also talking normal, general household pest control. You get into, uh, say, wildlife, where a lot of times it's a two-man crew, but you know they might be doing $15,000 jobs, and it's a little more technical. Those might not be where a service manager can just turn off, turn over, say, uh, you know, two green techs and say, all right, go take care of this job. They might have to be more involved. But general pest control is probably the smoothest. Lawn's a little tougher. Termite's a little tougher. But somewhere between four and ten techs, depending on their size. That's for a while. They can spark the president and don't help us while I can inspire just the whole system. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You know, a lot of challenges with wildlife. Visits. Yeah, I, I've learned to keep wildlife techs separate from echidral deaths. Don't mix them together. No. You mix them together, it's just, it's, just, it's good. It, it's going to drive you nuts. And it's just going to create, you know, like a spaghetti bowl. It's going to get all messed up. Yeah. Well, yeah. 